Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this evening's semi-final debate. My name is Liam, and I'm the chairman for this debate. The timekeeper is Clara. This debate will be judged by a panel of three adjudicators, who are Ms. Lowen, Mr. Tony Huey, and Mrs. Stephanie Forden. The topic of this debate is that internet dating is the way to go. The affirmative team seated to my right is from St. John's Grammar, and the negative team seated to my left is from Tyndale Christian School. The speaking time for this debate is six minutes. A single warning bell will sound one minute before the speaking time, and a double bell will sound at the speaking time. Please ensure your mobile phone is switched off. I declare this debate open and call on the first affirmative speaker, Jared Honcher. Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Jared, and I am the first speaker for the affirmative team of this debate. Our second speaker is Alex, and our third speaker is James. Our, I am our first speaker and will be speaking on the advantages of online dating for introverts, for niche interest groups, and that it allows a broader range of people to enter dating pools. Alex, our second speaker, will be discussing the benefits in terms of long distance relationships. Um, he will, uh, how it will enhance already functional relationships and that relationships will be no longer constrained by time. James, our third speaker, will provide a summary of our case as well as the closing remarks and rebutting the opposition. Firstly, I would like to begin by defining the topic. We define the topic as the creating and sustaining a romantic relationship using the internet as being a superior method to regular dating, but not replacing regular dating. We want to argue that the full potential of online dating has not yet been realised, and that it should become a more substantial part of the dating process. Now, on to my first point, being that it allows for a broader range of people to enter dating pools. When you've got a broader range of dating people, there are, in short, more fish in the sea. You've got a larger number of people that a datee can choose to date from. This allows for several things to happen. It allows for meeting of people who are not necessarily quite close in geographical landscape. For instance, it might allow somebody to meet someone from another side of a town, or even, in, or even further away in the same country. In short, location is no longer a limiting factor. It also allows for more international um, relationships, which, apart from providing the obvious benefits of allowing people to have very different cultures and therefore a great learning experience, it allows for a more general learning experience as well. It allows for better bonding of societies. In short, it allows for people who wouldn't normally be able to date, to date. Now, on to my second point. It allows for niche interest groups to date within themselves. Now, while people are not, while it is not always beneficial for people to have exactly the same interests, it is generally a good idea to have a few interests in common. Um, and some people have quite unusual interests. These might include being a professional smith, or being a chemist in your spare time, or being a poet. These people have quite unusual interests, and so it can be hard to find somebody who has a similar personality type or similar interests. Relating to my first point, having a larger group of people, it allows for people to also be more selective. It allows for people to select to date people who also have similar interests to them. It allows for online communities to form and interact in both a romantic and non-romantic situation. And now, on to my third point. It allows for introverts to actively socialise. According to The Scientific American, a prestigious journal, approximately one-third of people are introverts. 
This has a relatively complicated meaning, but in short, it basically means some people aren't, ju they're just not as outgoing and they don't want to interact with lots of people at the same time. This is called, tra this is an element of trait theory, where they prefer to interact one-on-one -on -one rather than one-on-many. -on -many. By allowing people, and encouraging to some degree, people to use online dating, it allows for people to speak one-on-one. -on -one. And where some people may be uncomfortable, say in a pub or in a bar or at a party, where there's lots of people who they don't know, they can find one person and speak one-on-one -on -one and directly to them. This allows for people who are naturally not outgoing to be outgoing and to be social where they normally wouldn't be. It enables one-on-one -on -one interaction and to be social in different situations. Now, I know that I have only just got up here and spoke, but there's another two people who will get up and present a similar, uh, who will present the similar case. We believe quite strongly that online dating should be encouraged to at least some degree without minimising the benefits of traditional dating. I have spoken about the advantages for introverts, for niche interest groups, and for allowing people to date a broad range of people. Alex will speak about long distance relationships, um, the ability to enhance normal relationships, and relationships not being constrained by time. James will provide a summary of our case. Thank you very much. I call upon the first negative speaker, Joshua Strippick. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Chairman, and my fellow debaters. As you would have already been informed, the topic for our debate is that internet dating is the way to go. We agree with the affirmative's definition, however, we want to further define the topic to bring a clearer understanding of exactly, what, of exactly what we are debating. We define the following words in this way. Internet, a network connecting people around the world. Dating, as per the Macquarie Dictionary, is a social appointment for romantic purposes. Is, in the present tense, the, not a, as in not unusable in conjunction with, but the only option. Way to go, way to create and sustain relationships in the present tense. Therefore, as a whole, we, the negative team, define the topic in the following manner. That a social appointment for romantic purposes conducted over the internet is superior to physical dating in creating and sustaining romantic relationships in the present age. We, the negative team, strongly disagree with this notion. Today, as the first speaker, I will be refuting the opposition's argument and presenting the benefits of physical dating for the exchange of chemical information. Our second speaker will also be refuting the arguments of the negative and presenting two points. Firstly, the increased ease with which deception can be performed over the internet, and secondly, the ability to learn social abilities such as befriending a person before you date them and operating in social situations. Finally, our third speaker will refute the opposition and sum up our team case. The opposition tried to tell you that Online dating is great because it is very broad and opens plenty of opportunities. This is 
wrong because statistics from Professor E.K. Cupid state that 96.25%, 96.25% of all online dating profiles are not active. Secondly, the opposition tried to tell you that online dating allows introverts to have one-on-one -on -one conversations where physical dating cannot. We believe this is wrong because physical dating can also be done in private. Now to my argument. Our argument today is based upon what Dr. Wilfred, Dr. Winfred Cutler, rather, in conjunction with the Athena Institute of Women's Wellness, describes are the five major factors in determining romantic suitability. The first four of which will be addressed by our second speaker. I'll be addressing the fifth. Excretion of, information, of informative pheromones. This chemical information is transferred through close physical proximity and specifically kissing, which assists in testing a partner's immune system. Kissing allows people to get close enough together, together sorry, to use smell, taste and touch to assess each, other's, to, to assess each other as potential mates. Research shows that people's breath and saliva carry chemical signals as to whether they're ovulating all important messages for potential partners in reproduction. Furthermore, the skin around people's noses and mouths in which uh, is rich in sebum, the oil, an, oily substance, an oily substance which coats our skin. Evidence suggests that sebum contains pheromones, chemicals that broadcast information about a person's biological makeup. When people pick up each other's pheromones during a kiss, they'll subconsciously become either more or less attracted to each other depending on what they detect. Studies show that people prefer the pheromones of those with different types of immune systems than theirs. Possibly because this genetic difference would improve the health and, vitali and vitality of the offspring they produce. It benefits the children, the relationship in the long term. Alongside the chemosensory cues exchanged during kisses, psychologists also believe that the, that the actual physical act of kissing helps couples bond. This theory is supported by the fact that Oxytocin, a hormone that increases most people's feelings of sociality, sociality, love and trust, floods brains when mouths kiss. Ladies and gentlemen, online dating does not and cannot provide the immediate and long-term benefits that physical dating can. Dr. Winfred Cutler specifically highlights that without such exchange of pheromones, which are produced through physical connections, an individual would not be able to determine the viability and compatibility of his or her partner. But not only that, but also the biological benefits for the relationship and especially their offspring. Online dating does not provide this almost necessity which physical dating grants. This is why, ladies and gentlemen, we strongly believe that online dating is not the way to go and physical dating should be embraced. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Alexander Fleming, and I'm the second speaker of the affirmative team on the topic that online dating is the way to go. We, as the affirmative team, strongly agree with this statement. 
I'll be going over some points later, but first, I have some issues with my opposition's arguments. I have a few, actually. You could say I have a couple. <laughs> <laughs> Firstly, we have a few problems with their definition. They defined online dating as a set of online dates. Online dates being purely online conversations or, meet or scheduled meetings. We're defining online dating as an activity consisting of multiple online dates, but also interspersed with physical, uh, with physical meetings every now and then. We also did not say that it is superior, we simply said that its potential has not been reached, and that we believe it should be integrated more into relationships, for multiple benefits that my team will explore. He also mentioned that introverts, cannot have, introverts can also have one-on-one -on -one dates in real life, physical one-on-one -on -one dates, and we have no problem with this statement. However, we were not saying that you cannot have one-on-one -on -one dates. We said it's difficult for introverts to find one-on-one -on -one partners in a crowded room where they are not comfortable. It is easier for them to find when there is less stress of multiple people talking and socialising where they are not comfortable, whereas they can simply find options that they and matches that they think they would like to explore online with ease. That is their element. Also, he went on, the first speaker went on at great length to explain the chemical aspects of physical dating and physical interaction. Lots of things about pheromones and lots of long words that unfortunately I didn't have time to write down. The end result of this is I think he has proved that face to face things are going to get done quicker. You are going to decide quicker whether this person is for you or not. But ladies and gentlemen, correct me if I'm wrong, but it's not half the fun of dating, the fun of the chase. Finding out what they're like face to face, talking about each other, finding out your interests, what you're like, what your morals are, what you believe. One on one, talking online could extend this, make it a longer period of time, make this part of your relationship last for a longer time, instead of simply recognising whether they're a good mate for your children by smelling their nostrils. <laughs> <laughs> and now on to my points. Firstly, we all know about long distance relationships. In today's world, we often need to travel far, often we need to stay there, and we will be separated from partners that we have already created. Long distance relationships exist now, and I don't know many of them that don't involve technology and online dating already. It's very, very hard to still love someone and feel a connection to them when all you have left is promises in the occasional letter. People already use things such as Skype, face-to-face -face chats, and Facebook messages to keep in touch. With long distance, with the, in the increase of online dating into our dating world, Distance will, no, will no, be no issue at, at all, and the amount of long-distance relationships could increase instead of heartbreaking breakups every time someone needs to move overseas. Long-distance relationships and the long-distance aspect of technology also allows to meet people from a different country. While this, also improve, uh, while this, on one hand, increases the racial acceptance of the world and the fact that we can find partners and interact with people on the opposite side of the world and realise they are people, abolishing stereotypes and the like, it also means that if you have a certain set of virtues, it often goes along with um, countries' virtues. If people from that country often hold the same kind of ethics and morality that you do, and same view towards life, it might be easier to, to simply find someone from that country than to find someone with those aspects which are rare in your own. And my second point is almost of the opposite to long-distance relationships. These relationships are hard because you're in the same place but time's not there. This could be because of shift work, it could be because of an inconvenient job, it could be because of social responsibilities, but it just means that you can't see each other face to face. You might be ready while he's off having a night shift, you might be sleeping while he's got to go pick up the kids, it doesn't, whatever the means, it means you can't have face to face time that you would normally have in a relationship. Online dating means that responses don't always need to be instantaneous. It can be an email, it can be a Facebook message, it can be a video message left for them to find after. You can continue these interactions and continue to see each other and interact with each other without having to have an instantaneous conversation. And this will allow for these relationships where you are perfect and you are sure you found the person you love and yet you cannot see them face to face all the time because time and circumstances simply do not allow. My third point is that I've mentioned, we've mentioned so far that it's good for introverts. It's good for people with niche interests. 
it's good for people who want a long distance relationship and it's good for people that are in a situation where they can't see each other face to face anyway. But I haven't talked about us normal people, us people who are fine to have regular relationships. What will online dating do for us? Well, it'll increase communication for one. Communication is the solid core of any good relationship. And communication is the solid core of any good online interaction. It's all it can be, basically. It's your talking to them. And normally, this relationship has to end when they go to work, when they go out, when they're at a party, when they're in a different country for a stay or a holiday. But when you've got an online dating part of your relationship up and running, you can be there. You can communicate with them for a longer amount of time, and you can continue that relationship over a longer period of time. You can be with each other for a longer period of time than if it was just a physical relationship. And this would strengthen the relationship, seeing as it would not be a physical-based thing, as relationships often become based upon sexual interaction, for example. As this isn't possible, it would make a relationship, it would force a relationship to be dependent upon communication, and that is what many relationships should be dependent upon. Thank you very much. Second negative speaker, Barley Stone. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Valentin Stoika, and I am the second speaker of the negative side. As you are aware, the topic of tonight's debate is that internet dating is the way to go. We, the negative team, are strongly against this, and tonight we will convince you of the same. We believe that physical dating is far better than the online. I will be presenting two major points to you tonight. Firstly, through physical dating, one learns to first befriend a partner before engaging with them romantically. A person learns how to conduct themselves socially, so that the next date is even better. It can also help one gain self-esteem and confidence in the self, which are human necessities according to Maslow's hierarchy of needs. My second point tonight will be the deceptive aspect of hiding behind a screen. It is a negative force in creating and sustaining romantic relationships, which we have both agreed is what this is all about. Not only detrimental to others, but also the self. But before I delve into my points tonight, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to refute the opposition's arguments. The first affirmative speaker tried to tell you that location will no longer be a hindering factor to dating if internet dating is used. What about the people who wish to meet, and they will need to meet at some point, if they wish to continue the relationship and take it further? How? Will they then be able to communicate socially with one another when they have been introverts behind a screen the whole time? The opposition told us of these introverts that prefer to interact one-on-one, -on -one, where physical dating will make them uncomfortable. But at one stage, these people want to continue the relationship, they will meet face-to-face. -face, and this is very possible to do in real life without too many people around. If they've only ever spoken behind a video screen, they would never have the opportunity to show confidence, to speak clearly. Rather than typing and editing what you wish to say, they will lack confidence. They need the interaction to continue the relationship. How far can it go without this? The opposition refuted our definition by restating their own definition. They stated that face to face in that face-to-face -face is integrated into internet dating. What is the opposite? Uh, what? Sorry. The second affirmative speaker also tried to tell you that international dating can abolish racial stereotypes. This is a slippery slope fallacy, as he went from uh, dating online to meeting people to eventually abolishing racial tension. Now to my first argument. 
Physical dating over online dating allows one to interact with others in a friendly, non-relationship-orientated manner before committing to dating. When one visits online dating services, they are officially branding themselves as single and looking to start something. But it is easier to get to know someone and easier to be yourself without the pressure of being on a date. Forming a relationship with a person before becoming romantic will greatly increase the chance that the relationship will last. That the people will be able to hit it off and actually know each other before trying to start something and light a spark. People can also become better in social situations through dating. They learn what is generally acceptable and the way in which to act and react in society. This can help in other situations such as meetings or just simply being around other people. Self-esteem and confidence in the self can also be greatly increased. According to Maslow's hierarchy of needs, a person requires these things to live a healthy life. They are needs. Without these things, people will, uh, will not be as healthy. My second point tonight, it is about deception. It is easier to deceive someone on host service such as eHarmony or, uh, <clears throat> or Zook. Physical, ap physical appearance, interests, and interest in romantic contact can all be manipulated and do not allow for acceptance of the true self. Not only can you deceive others with this, but who is really getting hurt? You, the person. The person doing the deceiving. Because you're presenting yourself as something that you are not. You're trying to start a relationship where you are not being fully yourself. Online people can more easily date several people at the same time. And this can be detrimental to forming healthy relationships, being committed to one person at a time and trying to make it work rather than, at the same time, pushing on many different levels and many different people. Ladies and gentlemen, we the negative team strongly disagree with the notion that online dating is the superior and only way to go. Real world, physical, face-to-face -face dating can help one socially. It can help them improve their self-esteem and confidence. While online dating encourages deception, and not being true to yourself at the same time. We, the negative, strongly believe that online dating is not the way to go, but rather that physical dating is better. For these points, we strongly believe that the physical far outweighs the online. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is James Biddle, as I'm sure you've heard, and I'm hoping that you figured out the topic of tonight's debate, that it, uh, online dating is the way to go, and we on the affirmative team strongly stand by this case. It's my job tonight to rebut the opposition's points and then sum up our team's case. The opposition's first speaker had a long speech about bodily contact and kissing and the, in, in, um, the exchange in which people can only have face to face. And of course, you can only kiss someone and be that physically close to someone through physical dating. Um, however, we would argue that online dating should have a more significant component in getting to that stage and also after that stage. Um, it's safer in the initial stages. It's better to be able to get to know someone from a distance before you get that close to start smelling them. Um, <laughs> Uh, uh, it also encourages a relationship based deeply on communication. Uh, and there is something that's been ignored here throughout the debate, I think, that um, talking online is in itself quite a skill. You have to be able to communicate well, you have to be able to convey ideas, you have to be able to really understand each other. And you'll find that there are people you can speak to online easily, like you're having a normal conversation with them, and there's people that you find are quite difficult to speak to. There are people that you find you struggle to have conversations with. So you can start learning to communicate and interact better and on a more 
on ultimately what is a more emotional and more a, a deeper level, something that relationships should be founded on before you get to that physical stage, which is of course necessary. You will eventually move to that point, but we are arguing that the online stage should be more significant in the dating process. The opposition second speaker that you stated that you can lie online. And yes, you can. Uh, that is, of course, one of the great fears, and I'm not sure how many people have seen the movie Catfish, which was the horror story about the uh, man who found out that the uh, girl he thought was his own age was actually an, old, an, an older lady who was completely fa had fabricated an entire story. Um, however, there is a certain amount of practical wisdom that can go into this. As we've mentioned, there are plenty of ways you can have voice calls and video calls, um, and as, as well as the fact that if you are getting to the point where your relationship is really a relationship, you are seriously dating each other and really feel as though you've got an emotional connection, you should probably think about seeing them. Um, it's, it's a wise point, but where, again, we are arguing that it's, you can have a great, you can, have, you can get to know someone well, you can find what things you have in common, you can, get really, you can find how compatible you are emotionally, but it is advisable to see their face, uh, even if it is over the internet. It is, there are plenty of ways in which you can find out if someone is lying to you before it gets to any stage where it could be emotionally harmful. Um, the second speaker raised the fact that, um, again, that introverts are, can have one-on-one -on -one dates. Um, and yes, again, they can have one-on-one -on -one dates, but finding people is the issue we're addressing here. For that particular group, the issue is finding someone. The way in which you meet someone initially is not generally one-to-one. -one. The most common places are social events, and they are large groups of people. They're out of their comfort zone. So once they've met the person, yes, they can have the um, they can have the one-on-one -on -one interaction. But the the benefit that online dating provides over physical dating is that you can have one-on-one -on -one interaction to meet someone. Um, the second speaker mentioned that um, that online interactions, especially long-distance ones, are, um, are through messages and that they're not sustaining. And again, we'd uh, like to reiterate the point that you can speak face to face, you can speak, you can have phone calls. This is all part. Skype calls, they're all part of online dating. It's not just text, it's not just messaging. You can still have, especially over long distance, where you know the person well, but you want to keep in touch, you can still have a meaningful relationship and have meaningful conversations over, over the internet. It doesn't have to be just through messaging. Um, the second speaker mentioned that um, it's better to find someone as a friend and um, get to know them first before you consider them, before you even consider having a, any form of romantic interest in them. And I'm not 100% sure that this is uh, correct. I think a lot of um, relationships are better, it's more honest and more open if they start with the obvious intention that this is something you'd like to go somewhere. Um, the, uh, on, in the online dating community, at least you have the idea that this person is looking for something more serious. There's no pretense, there's no, uh, there's no tricks and, um, and lies about what their, their reason is for being there. If you're an online site, a dating site, you are there to find someone to date. That's the, pur that's the purpose. Um, so now I've, I think I've sufficiently rebutted the opposition's point, so I'd like to quickly summarise our points before I finish. Um, our first speaker discussed the benefits that, um, that online dating can bring to introverts and to niche interest groups, people who would not otherwise be able to find someone that they are compatible with. And that online dating opens up a far broader range of people, including people that might be located far further away from you, on the other side of the city, in another town, further in a, um, or in another country. And that it, ultimately it opens up the horizons, it opens up the potentials for you. And our second speaker discussed the benefits that it can offer to people in long distance relationships, people who know each other well but want to keep in touch, don't want to lose that connection, who want to still on a daily basis be able to communicate even though they're geographically separated. And he also argued that um, there are the, far, the closer instances where people just the time doesn't work at the moment, they're too busy, they've got other responsibilities. And so it allows them, to, instead of having to um, find, set aside several hours, they can set aside a few minutes to have a quick conversation, or they can send each other messages which you can receive later. And finally, he argued that this has benefits not only for specific groups, but also for everyone, in that if you include online dating as a larger part of the dating process, it allows for more communication, it allows you to be more constantly involved, it gives you greater control over your dating process, and ultimately adds to the experience. So, ladies and gentlemen, I think we have shown very conclusively tonight that online dating is of great benefit to the dating process and should be included more in this very common social interaction. Thank you. Michael Rollins.
Good evening, Mr Chairman, ladies and gentlemen. As you've heard, the topic for tonight's debate is that internet dating is the way to go. We, the negative team, believe that this statement is untrue, and as the third speaker, I will summarise my team's reasoning for our stance on this topic. But first, I would like to take a few moments to address some of the assertions put forward by the affirmative team. In regard to their definition, they claimed that for online dating to be the way to go, it does not need to be superior to physical dating, but should simply be an add-on, something that is used in conjunction with it. But what is the reasoning behind this? The topic itself is that online dating is THE way to go, not A way to go. The topic itself clearly suggests the sole superiority of online dating. However, even if we agreed with the affirmative team's definition, the first speaker suggested that location will no longer be a limiting factor, and that this is in fact beneficial to dating. However, would this be particularly beneficial in the long run? Long distance relationships are not simple to maintain, even in instances where the relationship has pre-existed for a long amount of time. Furthermore, and, oh, okay, my apologies. Long-distance relationships in regard to cross-cultural dating. Firstly, Australia and other countries which in fact have access to internet technology are commonly highly multicultural, and as such, it is not difficult to meet people from other cultures in real life. The internet does not need to be an overriding factor in this case. The first affirmative speaker also claimed that it allows people from niche interest groups to date one another, and that this is difficult outside of on internet dating. However, there are many niche interest groups that gather together in real life. Poetry readings and niche band concerts and the like are common in many places. Should we encourage the use of the potentially deceptive system of online dating, when there are clearly so many beneficial physical options available. The third speaker of the affirmative team also reiterated their point about the meeting of people by highly introverted individuals. But how is this really possible? How is this made easy? When one of the most popular and advertised dating sites, eHarmony, themselves admit that 96.25% of their profiles are inactive. It is not a simple thing to find somebody online who is appropriate to meet, any more than it is simple in real life. The second speaker, a small point, rebutted our point by inferring that pheromones are transmitted by the light of smelling each other's nostrils. Now, I would like to point out that this is a fallacy by emotional appeal and a misquotation of the facts which were presented to you. The second speaker also quoted a marriage situation as a reason for online dating's positivity. However, in a marriage situation, physical proximity has already taken place. The vital stepping stones are in place. The technological aspect is simply an add-on to the vitality of physicality. Even if we were to agree with the opposition's definition, Marriages can function effectively in communication simply through a telephone call where you can know and ascertain your partner's voice. Intercomputer networking is an unnecessary complication. We already have effective ways of meeting this need. They also claimed that it increases communication in areas such as being at work, being at a party, or being on a holiday when one partner is separated from the other. However, I would question, do couples really need to be together 24 hours a day, 7 days a week? Because isn't anticipation of meeting your partner, anticipation of getting to spend time with them, to talk and to engage physically, one of the most important parts of the dating experience? The third speaker also claimed that dating is safer online in the initial stages of a relationship. However, our second speaker has discussed the dangers involved with online deception, which were acknowledged by our opposition. However, 
Even the voice and video calls that they quoted as effective ways of meeting this need can be deceived. They can be faked. Also, instead of promoting this tricky business, we could better educate individuals in safely dating individuals with whom you are not well acquainted. There are other options available that are not as risky. The third speaker also claimed that it is better to be romantically open straight away, to acknowledge your intentions at the get-go. However, many people claim and attest that true love grows with time. The love that lasts is often not the kind of instant attraction that is wanted in the online dating scene. And finally, ladies and gentlemen, our first speaker has informed you of the biological benefits of physical dating in regard to pheromonal exchange and the way in which this benefits the relationship in the long term, specifically in the regard to well-being of the offspring. Our second speaker informed you of the increased ease with which deception can be performed over the internet and how it is beneficial to many individuals, including introverts, to learn social abilities such as befriending a person before you date them and operating effectively in social and stressful situations. It is for these reasons, ladies and gentlemen, that we believe that internet dating is not the way to go.